Good evening, and before we start, an apology to the Ipswich Evening Star, who were clearly offended by Brian Sewell's comments on this show about the unattractiveness of Suffolk women. Uh, Brian Sewell, we think you look like the back end of a bus. <laughs> They went on, it's out of order, Sewell was wrong, he should have a night out in Ipswich. <laughs> Punishment indeed. <laughs> Elsewhere in the news this week, before a crucial World Cup cricket match, a groundsman inspects the wicket in Manchester. <laughs> Kevin Keegan denies that injury problems have limited his options as he reveals his new striking partnership. And after taking a wrong turning near Ipswich, Brian Sewell begins to regret having personalised number plates. <laughs> on Paul Merton's team is a newsreader who has an O-level in Mandarin. Good to have a tinned fruit expert on the show. <laughs> Bob Sturton. And with Ian Hislop tonight is a comedy actress whose previous jobs include working for a chiropodist who was a corn specialist, coincidentally the same man who supplied the opening jokes for this show, Pauline McLean. <laughs> Round one acts as our opening song and dance number, only without the song and dance. Ian and Pauline, your first course. Uh, eggs? <laughs> no, mushrooms. <laughs> Tomatoes? Tomatoes, presumably. Oh, it's oh, a Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> Cannabis growing? <laughs> Around the Parker Bowls is? No. Oh, I wouldn't put that in my mouth. <laughs> I think this is Charles intervening on mm -hmm. the issue of the moment. Genetically modified um, crops, plants, organisms. And he's very worried about them. Because uh, the plants have um, asked him to pass on their concerns. <laughs> And Tony Blair's not pleased with Charles either. Now that's mm. serious, isn't it? It is really, really smack Andy's. Don't do that again. I mean, if you're the heir to the throne and the Prime Minister's annoyed with you. <laughs> oh, you're in trouble, baby. Yeah, Tony Blair is said to be seething, apparently. <sighs> is he really? Well, sure not I can imagine size. him seething. That would involve stopping grinning, but. Um... <laughs> <laughs> but Charles has expressed an opinion, which is allowed, but it's an opinion that doesn't coincide with Tony's. And that isn't allowed. <laughs> and it's just silly, isn't it? And unhelpful. Yeah. If Tony says GM crops are safe, don't laugh. If Tony says <laughs> they're safe, they are safe. There's no need for further debate. That's yeah, fair enough. Uh, Tony's what... a top scientist. <laughs> What's the safest way of eating vegetables? Do you read you, this? Usually no. through your mouth. Right. right. <laughs> Any other office, you don't have enough. You just won't savour the taste any other way. Yes, I meant preparing vegetables. <laughs> you see how the language works? See? See? Yes. Yeah. Preparing. Yes. And at the same uh, Well, I, I will put you out of your misery and tell you it's to cook them, isn't it? it... <laughs> They say the safest way of preparing them is to massively overcook them, uh, so they're soggy and uh, dripping with water. And right. disgusting. Yeah. So yeah. school children are safe yeah. then. <laughs> There's another food stuff that's been banned this week. Do you read that? Belgian chicken. Yeah. Or eggs. And chocolate. Mm. <laughs> Why has chocolate been banned? Because it's made from milk. And milk comes. <laughs> from cows, which are friends of chickens, often. <laughs> uh, yes, it is uh, Prince Charles' attack on GM foods, complaining this week that the scientific <coughs> process involved mixing genes from vegetables with species that cannot breed naturally, although that's kept the royal family going for 800 years. <laughs> And Britain now has a total of 148 farms containing genetically modified crops, and if you're wondering where they are, just look for the sign saying, chase your own strawberries. <laughs> Paul and Ed, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. catch this one. Oh, this is cricket, isn't it? This is England have lost to India, there's Indians celebrating their win. It's a foreign policy question. Is it? Yeah, that's Kashmir, isn't it? Oh, yes, yeah. Well, I don't know what sort of sweater it was, I mean, I just can't tell. <laughs> More to do with the disputed territory. Oh yes, disputed territory. Yeah. Yes. Indians and the Pakistanis That's fighting right. over Kashmir. Yeah, yeah, tell him. Don't tell me. And, sorry. And... <laughs> I couldn't give a monkey's one way or the other. He, he pretends to be interested to tell him. But no, don't tell him. All right, I'll keep quiet about yeah. it. Yeah. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yes, we did. All right, we did. 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 Unless you ask nicely. Very nicely. Yeah. Right. Can you please tell me the answer? <laughs> because we're so bad at cricket, mm. Pakistan and India are going to play each other in the World Cup. Unfortunately, they're also fighting each other in Kashmir, so people are a bit worried about crowd control at the game. The day after they went out, they released the, the England single, <laughs> which is <laughs> more, slightly more than they scored in the matches. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, who edged them out? Uh, why did we... Uh... Well, because Zimbabwe Pakistan beat or... South Africa, mm. Gosh, unexpectedly. Very good on this. Mm, I knew I was coming on, so I read the news. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tactic that's paid off over the years. <laughs> <laughs> and who did Scotland lose to? West Indies? Mm. Uh, the mm. Shetland Islands. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how was Scotland described by an American evangelist this week? Did you read that? Yeah, oh, yes, Pat Robinson. Oh, uh, yeah, he got confused about kilts, didn't he? Yes. <laughs> Sc Scotland is full of homosexuals. Uh, a dark country overrun by homosexuals. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, where are we going to be able to watch cricket in the future? Because the BBC haven't got it for much longer. Sky? Sky, yeah. Uh, no, in fact, Channel 4 have outbid the BBC. Oh, right. That's right, yeah. Because oh, I thought it was talk radio. Yeah, you won't be able to hear it on Radio 5. You'll have to tune in to talk radio. Did, you, did he ever do snooker commentary on the radio? <laughs> It's really slow, interesting. It? Well, no, it'd be what? really difficult because you say, okay, and uh, here comes uh, uh, Steve Davis to break off. Oh, and there's a red everybody cushion, there's a red everybody cushion, there's a red everybody cushion. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. World Cup officials are now concerned about a potentially violent clash when India play Pakistan, sky blue and lime green. Oof. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ian and Pauline. European flag. That's someone voting in the European it's elections. It's my mother. <laughs> <laughs> That's a man mowing his lawn. Is that one of those crazy European um, rules? They've said lawnmowers are too noisy. Mm. So no. The Europeans mm. don't understand Britain. Because in their countries, you know, of a nice summer afternoon, people have a siesta. Perhaps get friendly, perhaps not. In this country, you get your lawnmower out. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to be quiet in your mm. own garden. I'm sure it's Swiss and German people. Want the noise down. <laughs> Why Swiss and German people? Because they're the most boring. <laughs> <laughs> so when are the Euro elections? They're on the 10th of this month. Mm -hmm. And everybody in this country will be there voting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The turnout is estimated in the UK at 25%. Uh, well, well, that's just pessimistic. I think people are very interested in Europe. Don't switch over. <laughs> The uh, elections won't be affecting Neil Kinnock, who's expected to remain as European Commissioner for Transport. Uh, Mr Kinnock receives a 5% bonus for being married with children, although he does get 10% knocked off for being ginger and Welsh. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, Paul and Ed. Well, it's uh, David, David Blunkett, obviously. Yeah. Education. Schools? Mm-hmm. It's about somebody cheating. Is it? But it's the government cheating. Not the students. Oh, ah, right, yes. Are they reducing the, uh, the uh, difficulty of exams? All 11-year-olds must be able to read reasonably well by the year 2002, mm. says the government. Mm -hmm. And David Blunkett has said that if they don't, he'll resign. Really? And it's beginning to look a bit dodgy that he won't meet the target and he uh, might have to go, so he's told people to make the exams easier, I think. Is that right? I'm supposed to be telling him again. No, no, that's right. I do beg your pardon. No, no. I just... <laughs> To make his own a little strategy chat with yeah. my team captain. So this is very interesting. So why do you think they've done that then? <laughs> I don't know. What do, you, what do you reckon? Well, I've heard. I tell you. Would you like some water? I'd I've, like heard, some water. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard that what they're doing is that they're actually making. <laughs> I've heard that they're actually making the. If you can't read very well, they actually right. make the exams much easier and they give you more time. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah and the examiners are told to reduce the, the level. Of, it's I think, extraordinary. I mean, who would have thought in our day and age that something yeah. like that would happen? Couldn't happen when we were young. Absolutely, never would have done. Yeah. Uh, we don't know the answer. Right. <laughs> it's much, much more fun talking to you than it is to him. Well, can you come back next week? Yeah, sure. sure. I'm going to show next week. That's absolutely that's fine. Why I asked. That's, yeah. that's what they've told you. <laughs> So, um, so how was it in your Mandarin class then? <laughs> <laughs> Were you fluent by the end of it? No. no. <laughs> don't ask me to speak any now because, well, I could say what I liked really, couldn't I? You yeah. Notice, but yeah. I won't pretend. Why, why, why did you choose Mandarin? Was it to get out of cross-country running? <laughs> 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 I 
were you a big on rugby, weren't you? Ca rugby captain? Yes, I was, yes. And this was the same school that Lawrence Delalio went to? Is this um, a honey trap by any chance? <laughs> <laughs> That's what, with Angus one. asking the question. <laughs> <laughs> it was the same school, yes. yes. Right. But right. in other respects, there is no similarity okay. between our careers. We'll take that as a yes, then. Um, <laughs> This is the government's plan to uh, cut the pass mark for national curriculum exams. Uh, David Blunkett said that he would resign if 80% of the children didn't pass level 4 by 2002. The good news is that most school children are working hard towards level 4. The bad news is that it's on Tomb Raider. <laughs> And uh, at the end of that round, uh, the teams are rather like England's top scoring batsmen in that they've got four each. <laughs> round two highlights the linguistic prowess of tabloid journalists everywhere. One bon mot per team to endure. Ian and Pauline, dial M for mayhem. I think, is this something to do with the phones? I can't keep up with the, the phones, so I think it's something they're changing the prefixes, are they? Mm -hmm. Again, in yeah. London, just when I'd had all my stationery printed. Um, <laughs> is that true? Oh, I've got pictures and everything. Oh, I've really? I've seen them in the phone boxes, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> but they're changing the London prefixes again, aren't they? Mm. And I think instead of having 0171, we're going to have 002, I think, and then your 7 or your 8. And then the number you first thought of. Yes. Divide <laughs> <laughs> it by 2, multiply it by 3, bingo, and, and you got your new number. Is there such demand for lines? It's because the whole of London and Portsmouth are uh, full of people on mobile phones. There are millions of people who've got nothing to say to each other who need to do it on a mobile phone. <laughs> Whilst walking down the street or being on the train. Hello, I'm on the train. Yes, we know. <laughs> we can see you. <laughs> it's, it's good not to talk. Though, it is. It? It's very good. Do you not have a mobile phone then? Yeah, I've got hundreds. <laughs> i got pagers, bleepers, you name it. Mm. I can be contacted at any moment. <laughs> though no one ever does. <laughs> Yeah, it's strange that, isn't it? Uh, four years ago, a BT bosses inserted a digit into the phone numbers of many small businesses, and given the chance, the owners of those small businesses would quite like to insert a digit into the BT bosses. <laughs> uh, Paul and Ed, mm -hmm. your deceptive spinner. Sex is back in Sussex. I did this on the Today programme yesterday. Did you really? What, I Sussex? <laughs> I thought you were sneezing. <laughs> it's about an art collector who lived in Lewis in Sussex, around the turn of the century. Mm -hmm. And he commissioned Rodin to do that sculpture of the couple canoodling, the kiss. And he brought it to Lewis and they didn't like it. They said it was immoral, expelled it. Last week it came back. Yes, that's right. He did make one condition, actually, to Rodin. The condition was that the genitals of the male were distinct and complete. <laughs> Don't we all make that condition about male genitalia, that they be, what was it, massive and complete? Or, you know, you know. I think it was distinct and complete. Uh, your conditions may be different. I mean. distinctly, distinctly massive and complete. <laughs> Didn't you have an embarrassing kissing experience, Pauline? Oh, I'm just trying to pick which one, <coughs> actually. Was your first boyfriend? Oh, my fight. Oh, God, yes. I, I, I ate two packs of cheese and onion crisps before he made the move, unfortunately. And I, I tasted like a badger's arse. <laughs> <laughs> Why would cheese and onion crisps be up a badger's arse? That's cruel. That's cruel. <laughs> hey! Do people still doing that in this day and age? <laughs> Get a badger's arse and stick it in the The badgers so don't they, mind, the crisps don't mind. Who's the victim? Well, I don't know. <laughs> they do the same with geese and quavers. Mm. <laughs> uh, it is uh, the return of Rodin's statue, The Kiss, uh, to its original home in Lewis. Uh, a rehearsal of the move was carried out last week using a dummy, which was a pile of two kilogram bags of cement wrapped in cellophane. It was later returned to the Tate, where it immediately won the Turner Prize. <laughs> 
when the <laughs> statue, which features a naked Paolo from Dante's Inferno, first went on display, one local headmistress, Miss Kate Fowler-Tutt, nearly had a stroke. And unfortunately, she couldn't quite get near enough across the road. <laughs> Which uh, artistic license means at the end of this display, uh, neither side seem to have uh, taken it upon themselves to establish a lead, both clinging desperately to six. Mm. Round three is next up, and Obon outs the Johnny. Paul, your popular figures are Marilyn Monroe, Karl Marx, James Major, and Prince Edward. Miles away. Um, <laughs> uh, Prince Edward's overdoing the shamrock. Um, <laughs> let me see. James Major married Emma Noble. She's uh, an ex topless model. Prince Edward's uh, bride to be Sophie appeared uh, against her will, um, topless the other day. Uh, Karl Marx. It, uh, um, <laughs> I say that Marilyn Monroe's the odd one out. Because the other three are connected or are going to be married to people who appear topless in public. It is the wrong answer. <laughs> oh, is it they've all had a potato named after them? <laughs> the Marilyn potato, the Carl yeah, Marx yeah. potato. <laughs> the James Major potato. His father, you mean? No. <laughs> uh, I'll give you a clue. Uh, well, why are you giving them a clue? <laughs> well, you can listen to it as well. If oh, you okay. Want. Uh, <laughs> Well, it's to do with weddings. They all had white weddings. No, it's uh, more to do with uh, the time they've chosen to have their wedding. Ah, oh, Saturday. They got... <laughs> <laughs> They're all getting married on a Saturday. Marilyn Monroe got married on a Saturday. Karl Marx is, no, you'll never get married on a Saturday. So he got, he got married on a Sunday, so he's the odd one out. Is the wrong answer. <laughs> they all chose June the 19th. Uh, as their wedding day, except for James Major, who was, of course, uh, married last Saturday. Uh, well, a bit obscure, really. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> James Major and Emma Noble were married in the House of Commons crypt, although proceedings were interrupted halfway through when Michael Howard sat up in his coffin to complain about the <laughs> <laughs> What, in daylight? <laughs> <laughs> you haven't thought the joke through, have you? <laughs> Doesn't work anymore. <laughs> uh, like you. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Uh, recent research into Karl Marx's life has revealed he was a regular at London pubs such as the Mortimer Arms, the Northumberland Arms, the Rising Sun, the Blue Post, and the Jack Horner. A fact which explains why an early draft of the Communist Manifesto had a chapter entitled "You're my best mate, you are." <laughs> uh, Ed, Trevor MacDonald. Martin Lewis, the Duchess of York, and a sheepdog. Is this a cruel question? Is this about be. people being taken off television by any chance? <laughs> there was talk of Trevor going because News at 10 was axed, but he came back at 6.30, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There was talk of one man and his dog going, but there was a huge public outcry. Mm. That came back. Fergie, has there been talk of her? Um, she's probably lost the show on Sky, but may have Less been a of an outcry, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Martin also talked about him being cut, and uh, we haven't seen him for a couple of weeks. Mm. So all how are you saying the odd one out? Martin Lewis, all the rest survived. He didn't. Yes, I'll give you that. Uh, the answer is so that their programmes work. have all been axed, uh, except for Martin Lewis, who was himself axed whilst his programme continues. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. How do you like the new revamped uh, Six O'Clock News? I think everything that the BBC does is completely wonderful, and all decisions taken by its management are entirely wise and just. Because <laughs> <laughs> ratings plummeted, of course, uh, as soon as the revamp had been completed. Couldn't possibly comment. I'm sure that was seasonal. Or something. <laughs> what, in the middle of May, they were... <laughs> You know, people are mowing the lawn or Absolutely. looking for genetically modified crops or yeah. whatever. It's and quite natural. And then Hugh Edwards was suddenly ill for a week? 
Well, poor chap, I mean, he's a human being. You know, all these, these things do happen. What are you getting at? Just wondering if you had any inside information. Have you got any inside information? Mm -hmm. Very little. <laughs> <laughs> then why are we talking about it? <laughs> I've got some inside What's information. That, You're a Burke. <laughs> So who's protested at one man and his dog being taken off? I think the culture secretary did, didn't he? Mm. Chris Smith. Yeah, yeah. Why didn't he do it with guide dogs for the blind? You've got to get this bloke through Piccadilly Circus. <laughs> <laughs> Into the men's department in British home stores. He's got to buy a grey sweater <laughs> and a pair of sneakers against the clock. It'd be a great idea. <laughs> I'm sure Sky will be doing it by tomorrow morning. <laughs> Uh, the Duchess of York's chat show on Sky uh, began with spirituality, followed by anorexia and then cosmetic surgery. After that, and two hours in makeup, she was ready to go. <laughs> uh, Ian, the Cray twins, Peter Mandelson, the Duchess of Windsor, and Jimmy Savile. Um, I think this is a question about um, men who love their mothers, mm. because Jimmy Savile always calls his mother Duchess, yeah. or used to. Um, the Crays loved their mum, and I think they called her the Duchess. That's right. Yeah. And Peter Mandelson, um, who looks as though he's doing a Colgate ad there, <laughs> he said his mother was like a Duchess. And the Duchess of Windsor um, was a Duchess, of a sort. Anyway, she was a Duchess, and the others all called their mum Duchess. Is the right answer? No. <laughs> Jimmy's mother's name was Agnes. Uh, she died in 1978. Uh, Jimmy stayed with her body for five days and described it as the best five days of his life. <laughs> Jimmy Savile doesn't run a motel somewhere in the middle of America. <laughs> <laughs> Um, after their arrest and life sentences in 1969 and the collapse of their nightclub empire, the Cray twins thought things couldn't possibly get any worse until 1990 when they were portrayed in a film by two members of Spandau Ballet. <laughs> and uh, finally in this round, Pauline Peter Brook, Charlotte Nielsen, Donald Finlay and Rumpelstiltskin. I, I think this must be a singing one because... Uh, Charlotte Nielsen uh, is going to be made an honorary Irish woman for winning the Eurovision recently, and we didn't. I and think you tried to lose this year, didn't you? No. Yeah. Because you didn't want to host it again. You put in a really bad song on purpose. That hasn't always worked before. <laughs> 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 you know, so she won for singing. Um, Peter Brook, I saw actually on the Late Late Show, the time he sang Clementine, there was a bomb in Northern Ireland, and, and people said, because he was, he was obviously posted there, um, that uh, it was very insensitive. He sang well, I thought. And um, <laughs> Donald Finley recently got into trouble for singing sectarian songs, I think. Mm. Um, and oh, then there's mm, Rumpelstiltskin was caught out because he was caught singing his name and, and the woman had spied on him and, and guessed it. Ooh, so to, so, so singing was bad. Bad, so she's bad, bad for those and bad, three, and, and good for her. her. So I'm going to say that that lovely blonde lady, Charlotte Nielsen, um, is the odd one out. That's pretty much the right answer. Mm. Yes, yeah. yeah. yeah, so it's more precisely, the, the answer is that they've all sung a song that they later regretted. Mm -hmm. uh, except Charlotte Nielsen, who won't regret winning Eurovision for at least a couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, Donald Finlay was forced to uh, resign as vice chairman of Rangers Football Club after singing anti-Catholic songs at a party. You have to be very careful or you end up on the front page of the Daily Record, he was quoted as saying, on the front page of the Daily Record. <laughs> <laughs> Which, uh, bum notes, uh, bring a screeching to the end of this opus with uh, Paul and Ed in something of a cleft stick, trailing as they are 10-8. Mm -hmm. And so to the long-awaited relief of our final, final round. So, all aboard for Margaret Cook takes what? Eat yeah. up the arse. <laughs> Promise me that will be cut out of the <laughs> thing. We promise. We promise. <laughs> Chiswick High Street. <laughs> Takes it up Chiswick High Street. Um, she doesn't take yeah. it up anywhere. Um, <laughs> Where do <are> you look? <laughs>
never know. It's Friday night, our new bloke said, can we go to the cinema? What do you mean? You're taking me up the Ritz seat? Yeah, off we go. <laughs> Oh, new job. She's yeah, an agony yeah, aunt. Uh, an agony, agony aunt, aunt job, yes, at long last, is uh, the right answer. Next, BBC spends £40 million on what? Corporate headquarters or something. And very wise decision it was, too. Angus's <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> suits. <laughs> It's management office, isn't it? Executive suite is how it puts it, mm -hmm. but uh, yes, this is the money being spent on uh, creating an airy new office space. Could have just used the inside of a scheduler's head. Uh, <laughs> next, the telescope will show little what? The telescope will show little man eating chocolate mousse on Neptune. He's <laughs> been there for years. <laughs> will show little because the cap has been left on. Um, no, interesting answer, if wrong. Uh, little except a black hole. And uh, lastly, light snack for what? Snake that swallows light bulb. Yeah. There's a snake that swallows. <laughs> <laughs> snake, 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 yeah. snake. Yeah, uh, well, <laughs> it may be, but it is from the sun. You have to. Bear. Riot. You can use anything that looks good.